The following is a presentation of the Match Talk Podcast Network. Hello, wrestling fans. It's time for the World Wrestling Resource Podcast. The World Wrestling Resource was made that you as a wrestler, parent, coach, or fan can have access to all the resources of the very best in the world of wrestling. I'm three-time wrestling writer and broadcaster of the year, Jason Bryant. And I want you to join me, along with John McGovern and world champions Terry Brands and Dennis Hall, as we talk training tips, topical discussion, mental preparation, and more on the World Wrestling Resource Podcast. World Wrestling Resource is sponsored by Defense Soap. Find World Wrestling Resource on Facebook at facebook.com slash worldwrestlingresource. And follow us on Twitter at WWRESO. And, of course, on the web at worldwrestlingresource.com. Now on to the show as we join John McGovern, Terry Brands, and Dennis Hall. Episode 38 of the World Wrestling Resource Podcast. Jason Bryan here with you today, joined by a couple national team coaches who know a little bit about the sport of wrestling. Terry Steiner, women's national team coach, and Matt, the law. Linland, Matt, I had to throw the law in there just because it was fresh on the brain. Uh, Matt Linland, the national team coach for Greco-Roman. And we're getting ready for world championships, and it's a world championships with non-Olympic weights. And before we even get to the discussion about the athletes that you guys have, we'll just start with Coach Steiner as he's finishing up practice in Colorado Springs. About the Olympic experience, we had a gold medalist, the first one in this country's history for women's freestyle wrestling with Helen Maroulis. Uh, not necessarily the performance I think we all hoped from the from the entire team, but uh, let's just talk about Helen's performance right off the bat. I mean, when when you have to win a gold medal and you beat Superwoman to do it, that's quite an accomplishment, not just for the athlete, but for the entire country. Yeah, no, it, it was a huge win for Helen Merlis. It was a huge win for the women's program and, and for USA Wrestling and, and USA as a whole. I mean, it was, uh, you know, it was just one of those performances that she was not going to be denied. Um, you know, her whole bracket was a very strong bracket. Um, coming through North Korea, coming through Sweden and, with Madsen, and and then, um, you know, having your sheet in the final. It was just, uh, she was on, you know, and, and and I thought before going in, I, I said it before, that I thought it was Helen's time. And um, she definitely showed that it, it was it was definitely her time. And, and, you know, she had just an outstanding performance. One thing about, Helen's training, and she talked about this, is she got really focused. She decided to to go with Valentin Kalika and, and train with him in California. And this is something as a national team coach, what is your what has been the theory or the idea of saying, okay, this athlete needs this? How do you tie that into the national team plan? And how do you, you basically build what Valentin's got going with his athletes with with your plan as the national team coach? Well, I think that's our job as the national team coaches. Our job is to find the best possible situation for the athletes and what their needs are. And, um, you know, I think it's it's just a change. I mean, for, for a long time, you know, we had uh, a, a very centralized program where everyone was training out of Colorado Springs. And, and uh, you know, as the program is evolving and uh, there's changes. And, and one of the things that, you know, for Helen was, you know, just being in a more personalized situation. And, and so, you know, that's our job to, to make that work and find a way to make that work and, and uh, get that, get those people involved in the program and understand what our needs are as an overall program and, and, and still lending ourselves to what the individual needs are. But the bottom line is, you know, to, to win at the highest level, we need individual performances. So, you know, whatever that is to make that happen, that's, again, that's our job. And so, so um, you know, that's the management, you know, part of this job. It's not all just getting on the man showing technique. It's about managing the system. And and so, you know, that's, that's a huge part of the job. What about you personally? You took over the position when it was basically starting from scratch. There had been some coaches in that position, but this was this was a situation you've well do- you've been well documented in saying you weren't really sure what to expect, and now you've seen it through fruition. That as an Olympic sport, you've got your first Olympic gold medal. How much is that going to 
impact women's wrestling from from the grassroots level all the way to in your wrestling room in Colorado Springs? I mean, it, it's finally happened. Does that make the job easier for you or does it make it tougher for you? Well, I think, you know, I don't know if it makes it easier or tougher, but, you know, I mean, I think it was very, very important for us to bring home a gold medal, you know, and, and I think that, you know, it, it's already been, this is our fourth Olympics, um, and uh, to not have one this time would have been uh, hard to swallow. But, but you know, I think, it, you know, now it's just utilizing that the right way. We finally have a an Olympic champion, and, and people know that we can do that in this country and the, and the women's side of the sport and, and um, know that they're capable of it. And, and we have a, a girl like Helen Merlis, who's a great spokesperson and a great role model and just an unbelievable human being um, in that role. So, so you know, I, I think it's a, it's a very good situation that we're in right now, and we just need to make sure we're publicizing that and taking advantage of, of the situation we're in right now. Coach Lindlin, going over to Greco-Roman, no medals for Greco. Uh, shut out of of the games, and then uh, we we saw possible medal hopes by basically everybody that was there. Uh, we we saw as a strong medal contender, but things just just did not go the Americans' way. There were some situations where you saw Ben Provisor uh, wrestle the wrestle the Uzbek uh, Asakalov, who's got the wicked headlock, and basically he, he broke him late. Couldn't have didn't have enough time to win it, and that guy was just dead to rights the rest of the tournament. Ultimately. Um, that's something we've seen from American wrestlers on all styles is, you know, we, we beat an opponent and then all of a sudden they're, they're toast their next match. But from a, from a planning standpoint, from a performance standpoint, where do you see improvement? Where do you see things that, that going into the next quad that, uh, that you think that we're going to turn the tables here in, in Greco Roman in America? Well, it's a, it's a, almost an entirely new sport when you take out the uh, force part tear. So we, we've got to completely readjust the way we're wrestling. We've got to uh, we've got to go back to you know reteaching our athletes that it's okay to go in there and, and score points on their feet because there is no opportunity on top. You know we got to take hold. We got to we got to execute. Um, we can't wait. You know we're, we're wrestling. You know guys that that wrestle Greco Roman their entire life. So it's the only style of wrestling they know. And most of our athletes are transferring from an American system, which is. Uh, you know, typically, you know, with, with the elite athletes, it's it's all three styles of wrestling, Greco, freestyle, and, and folk style, of course. And um, so we got to make some adjustments. You know, we uh, we have to go in and, and secure a position. We have to execute right away. We can't we can't jockey for the best position. Sometimes you you, you take what you get and, and you got to score with it. You know, so, I mean, we, we just competed last week in Baku and. Um, I mean, this is the way we're, we're training, but the guys didn't, didn't execute, uh, as I had hoped, um, in their matches, you know, and we got Martinez that's coming up wrestling here at the worlds. He competed there. He won his first match, but he won it on, on a push out and, and passivity points. You know, he didn't, he didn't go out there and take the match. And then he tried to win a, a second match the same way. Um, uh, we have to go in and we have to score, we have to execute techniques um, so it, it's going to require us probably spend a lot of time in Europe uh, training, competing with with the uh, the athletes that are here in Europe that have been wrestling Greco-Roman their entire lives and getting in here and and competing with them, training with them, and getting to that level. But you know, I think after the games, it's it's always a matter of who's sticking around, who's you know who's going on. But you know, we're we're moving forward as if you know it's it's entirely new athletes and we've, we've got to teach an entirely different system and and philosophy of wrestling and as, as we record this episode here on december 1st you're in budapest right now so we've got uh, i'm in minnesota coach steiner's in colorado springs matt you're you're in budapest prepping already uh following the golden grand prix and we were talking about the training and the acclimation is is it you you are you treating this world championships the same way as you did with with the olympics and other world championships as term, in terms of getting your athletes ready and acclimated well we didn't have quite the quite the opportunity the the world championships were sprung on us um pretty much i'd have to concur with coach steiner there but it was pretty much at, um right before the olympic games we had an announcement uh maybe a month before saying Hey, there's going to be a world championship. So then we had to set up a trial process and procedures. Uh, we had to have a trials, which was at the New York AC a few weeks back. Um, we already had guys coming over to Baku. So instead of flying all the way back 
to the United States, uh, we figured, you know, let's, let's start that training with our European counterparts and right away. So the guys that were in Baku with me came over here. The rest of the team met me today. Um, and so we're going to get a little training in, but, uh, yeah, we're, we're preparing for this as, as you know, it's a world championships, uh, event, you know, and so we're going to go out there and, you know, hopefully have our guys as prepared as, as they could possibly be to compete at this level. How much are you trying to mimic maybe the world championships? Because with the, with you've got the guys over there that were already there for the Golden Grand Prix, whereas normally you'd have uh, each athlete would have a training partner and a wrestler instead of bringing four guys, a, you know, a trainer, some assistant coaches. You've got you've got more athletes there. Do you think that helps with uh, you know Patrick Martinez and Chris Gonzalez as their training and their preparation for this? I mean, Patrick's been through this once before, whereas this is this is Chris's first go. Yeah, Chris is pretty inexperienced. Uh, he's probably got a lot of nerves and you know uh, expectations uh but it's it's a, it's just like any other tournament he's got to go out there and compete patrick uh, has wrestled at one world championships and i i feel like he's hungry he's he's doing the right stuff he typically always does the right stuff you know but we we actually have a competition two days before the world championships uh the club cups which is in freestyles going on uh somewhere in europe right now uh Where's it? Where's that? They just the finished place? up in Ukraine prior to prior to this. It was uh, the the Gwizdowski got the uh, the takedown though to give Titan Mercury the win. So right before okay. we started this show, yeah, yeah, they finished up in Ukraine. Yeah, we compete eight and ninth for for our clubs cup. So so our our athletes that are competing in that just arrived. Um, Martinez was went uh, went to Baku. He was already scheduled to go to Baku after he made the team. You know, I just wanted to confirm that that was. You know what he what he still wanted to do as far as his plan, and absolutely it was it fit into what you know my philosophy, and it fit into what he wanted to do. So we stuck with that plan, and we brought him over here. Um, you know, we we didn't know who was going to be on the team when we when we were booking our our competition in at the Grand Prix. So uh, we didn't we didn't have the opportunity to bring Gonzalez with us to get him some extra matches and experience because uh, you have to get visas and. There's uh, buying plane tickets and all that stuff that goes into uh, traveling with a large contingency overseas. Uh, moving forward with with development, Coach Steiner, uh, talking about the women's freestyle side of things, and we're we're moving into I believe the twelfth or thirteenth year of the WCWA. We now got uh, twenty five thirty teams on the women's college level. You're seeing athletes now choosing colleges, and we've, we're seeing some of our Olympians have gone through that route. They're 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 getting the opportunity to wrestle freestyle wrestle in college and it's it's really close to being an emerging sport how important is it for the program at usa wrestling with women's freestyle that this sport of women's freestyle wrestling gets emerging status from the ncaa and and what's usa wrestling doing to try to push that well i think it's very important you know i mean the, the more opportunities we have for women at the collegiate level you know it, it's going to push our states to you know, grow our numbers there. I mean, but, you know, the more opportunities we have, the more numbers we're going to have, the more numbers we have, the more we have to pick from, right? And 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 it's really, this this becomes a numbers game at the national level. So so it's very important, you know, that the emerging sports status, I think, is, is a huge thing for us. It's one of our, you know, one of my main initiatives is to get that emerging sports status with the NCAA because, you know, then, then it's a whole nother, you know, set of opportunities for women and, and women can be at major colleges and, and, and things like that. So I think it's, I think it's very important, you know, to, and I think just for the involvement of our sport in general um, and, and for the safeguarding of our sport at the collegiate level, I, I think it, it's very important um, to have women as a, a counterpart to, to our men's programs. So, so I think, you know, not just for the women's program, but for wrestling in general, it's a huge thing. Um, but, you know, we're, we're not that far away. You know, we, we have, we're, have a committee right now that we're working on uh, putting together the pieces. Uh, we have to submit a plan and a, and a proposal to a committee with the NCAA that um, looks at sports that are trying to gain emerging sports status. Um, so we have to have that proposal done by September and there's a lot to do with it. It's not a simple process. So, so we're working on that right now. And then, you know, once we, once we give it, put it in their hands, then, you know, I'm sure it's another year or so um, 
there's some time for them to make the decision on what they're going to do with it. But, but, you know, based on what other sports have had when they've gained emergent sports status and what we have with, with, and we have 33 college programs right now um, on the women's side of things, we have seven States that have a, a sanctioned high school sport for, for gr- girls at the high school level. So uh, w- our numbers are a lot larger than other sports have had, you know, and so we got a lot of good things going on uh, right now. And and I think it'll bode well when we uh, finally do get our proposal ready for, for that committee, with the NCAA committee, but, you know, we're we're very actively doing that. And, and um, um, it's one of the things that our former team leader, Kira Berry uh, is kind of heading up and taking on. And and we're very grateful for that. And as we look at, the landscape of college wrestling right now, there's just a handful of NCAA schools that, that sanction it. Uh, King and Simon Frazier in division two Pacific and division three. Most of the others are NCAA. Of course, McHenry, of course, a division two school as well, but it, it seems that the legitimacy on the college level that we're waiting for that division one team to take the leap of faith. And right now it seems like uh, the logical Places to go or where, you know, at Arizona State, because we've had women trained down there and Art Martori is close to that program and really done a great job with with Sunkist. Kevin Jackson's been outspoken about uh, thinking it could work at Iowa State. He's also got ties to to the Sunkist realm. And then your brother getting the head job at Fresno State. There's been chatter there. I mean, what what do you think it's going to happen? How in, how much of an impact? I mean, I guess it's kind of a loaded question when a Division One school adds it, no matter who it is. Is that just going to be the, the 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 floodgates opening for women's wrestling at the college level? Well, I hope so. That's my hope. But you know, I think it's definitely going to make everyone stand up and pay attention uh, when, when we do get that emergent sports status. I think we have, you know, one of the things within that proposal is is getting ten university presidents to say that when we get emergent sports status, um, they will seriously consider adding women's wrestling as a, as a varsity sport. So, you know, when that happens, I mean, I think it, I think it's going to move fast. I think there's going to be a lot of opportunities quick. I mean, because if you're the first, you know, one of the first programs, you're going to reap the benefits of it. You know, people are going to take, take notice of that. They're going to jump on board. You're going to get a, a lion's share of top recruits. And, and, you know, that could, you know, really set your program well for well into the future. So I, I think it's going to be, and I'm hoping that it's going to be floodgates, like you said, but it's definitely going to increase the opportunities, uh, I think, very quickly. Coach Lindland switching over to Greco-Roman in terms of that development that we did not have at the college level until – Kerry Regner down at Williams Baptist in, in Walnut Ridge, Arkansas, took something to his athletic director and his school president and has the first true college-only Greco-Roman experience that goes with the U.S. Olympic training site at Northern Michigan, which is not really um, – compete. they hadn't had competed on the NCAA match since the program was dropped a long time ago, but they've had the women in Greco up there for a while now, mainly Greco. And now you've got a college school, an NAIA school that's a new program, taking a chance in a Greco-only program – when you first heard the news of this, I mean, th- this has got to get you excited. Yeah, no, Carrie's been working on this for a while. And, and you know, obviously with our support and our blessings, uh, and, you know, we want to help them any way we can. Uh, any time, just like Coach Steiner said, anytime you have more athletes competing in your style of wrestling, um, I mean, this, this is what we struggle with. Um, so if there's, if there's a clear path where athletes can not only compete, but they can also get their education, um, you know, but I mean, I, I think there's there's plenty of opportunities to get education outside of, you know, college systems. I mean, uh, traveling the world on an international circuit is quite an education. You get to experience a lot of cultures, a lot of languages and, you know, and history all over the world. But but, yeah, I mean, I think when when you're talking with, you know, younger athletes and, and their parents, um, they, they want to see that college degree. So I think the, that's a very uh, important step for us moving forward. And, um, we just, I just got wind of another college that's, that's made a commitment to, to move in that direction, uh, on the West coast. So, um, yeah, we're, you know, carries up and running full blown and, uh, the next school's, uh, you know, a couple steps behind them, but, um, maybe just one year, it sounds like. So we're, 
we're, we're hoping to grow that at, at the college level and, and experiment with seeing how that'll work. I mean, it's certainly not going to hurt when, when you have more athletes in your country that are wrestling Greco-Roman style. And as far as uh, Andy Biesick now just taking a coaching job back up in Marquette and his opportunity to get his hands on the developmental athletes, how much is that going to help the program? I think that's that's a critical step for us. We you know we needed to make a change up there, um, make some adjustments. With you know we have Coach Rob Herman up there as you know a solid administrator, great leader, good coach, but uh, you, you need somebody that's going to attract the the young talent, the um, the coach that that's been there, that's done that. He's he's competed at at the highest levels. He's won medals on the world stage, and the, you know he's he's a guy that's current and he's relevant that. You know, I, I could see a lot of young athletes wanting to compete for a guy like Andy Besick. He's he's an incredible leader. Um, you know, I, it was there was only one guy I wanted to take that job, and I, I was very grateful that Andy, uh, you know, took took us up on that opportunity and that offer to to be our coach up there as as the assistant coach for Northern Michigan. Now, as we head into Matt, this is your first full four-year cycle coming up, and you, you came in prior to the Worlds in 2014. What did you learn from that? That abbrevi- it wasn't a, You didn't have the full four years, but it wasn't the full uh, opportunity to really start looking one games and then into the next. What did you learn from your, your first couple years on the job that you're going to take into the next quad and be like, okay, this is where I know I need to fix things. This is where we need to fix things. But uh, mainly you as, as, as a coach, what, have you, what did you learn about yourself the last you know, two and a half, three years? Well, I think a big thing was what I suspected, and and we're, we're starting to we were starting to test it um, in in the first two years here was getting getting more younger athletes, uh, guys that are that are willing to commit straight out of high school into senior level. Um, we we've traditionally and, and historically we've seen guys that are able to to medal at the junior level um, have a higher percentage of, of you know producing medals at the senior level. Um, this this year. We got we got two medals at the uh, Junior World Championships, and I don't think we've done that since maybe uh, Lowney and Paulson, or maybe we, we might have done it one year when Ellis, maybe Ellis and uh, Toby, uh, but that was quite a while back. You know, we we haven't done that that frequently and that often. Got multiple medals at the the Junior World Championships. Both of those athletes are back. Lamont with two more years of junior eligibility. Tracy with one more. Um, the only the only athletes we're losing at at that level was uh, Dalton Roberts and uh, Jamal. So everybody else is is returning. So I, I'm I'm looking forward to moving these these younger athletes through the progression of of junior competition, junior world championships. Also, at the same time, getting them experience at the senior level. So so guys like Tracy uh, Hancock, Kamal Bay. Um, are, are also competing senior level events, and and we're going to find some more of those young athletes that are going to be able to to not only compete at the junior level, you know, and compete, you know, medal at, at the world championships, but uh, also at the same time compete at our senior level. So we got our, our U.S. Open coming up right when we get back from from this trip, and you know, hopefully, we'll have some younger athletes on our national team, and we can continue to move that forward. So that was that was one lesson that you know that I'm I'm seeing that I suspected, and that's why you know I, I put a lot of focus on getting these younger athletes into our program, getting them into our room, training with us, getting them overseas, competing, and uh, that that's that's working. So if you've got athletes in, that you've developed. Instead of letting a, a folk style system develop them and then try to convert them, I, I think we're going to have a lot more success with that model. Um, that's that's my belief, and that's what I'm I'm seeing work already. Now, Coach Steiner, shifting over to you when talking the women's freestyle world championships here. Sarah Hildebrandt, Allie Reagan, uh, representing the United States in the non Olympic weights. This is Sarah's first opportunity on a senior world team. She's been on a couple junior world teams, and you know Allie's been there, done that, uh, both on the junior and senior level. What are you expecting? Both these these athletes are young, but they're veterans. They've been they've been around the circuit for a while. What are you expecting from both of them? Uh, with both of them also coming off a little bit of the disappointment of not making the Olympic team. Yeah, no, I mean you know they're they're girls that are right in the mix, and I, I think they're going to have an opportunity over there for for you know a great performance and bringing something back. I mean we, we definitely feel that they're you know still you know in, in that mix for you know the 2020 position. So it's very important for us to get, 
to keep getting experience and keep putting them in in front of the the best people out there and, and testing ourselves. So, you know, we're we're looking to go over there and, and bring some hardware home. But you know, I mean, more importantly, I think we're we're looking to get over there and have some great performances and and um, just see where we stack up. So, so yeah, we're excited. I mean, Sarah Sarah's is their first time in a world team. I think it's a a big step for her and and you know. Um, she, she definitely has a lot of talent and, um, you know, it's just letting herself shine a little bit. And, and so she's, um, I think it's going to be a, a good situation next week. So now one thing that both of you guys um, have in common and we're, we're talking, uh, the senior nationals slash the trials are going to be in, in, in Vegas, basically a week after the non-Olympic world championships. And uh, this is a, a Greco women's thing back in 2012. Uh, they both, you both kind of did the same thing. Actually, Matt, this is before you were on staff, but uh, in Arlington, Texas, Greco and women had a nationals there. that kind of set, set the ladder for the Olympic trials. I'm um, going to keep it with coach Steiner first, but um, the, the decision to put the senior nationals in the trials qualifier in December leading into 2017 uh, versus the, the traditional way of kind of holding it with men's freestyle. Well, I, you know, it all stemmed from last year. We, we we were still making our team, the Olympic team, as we were trying to qualify the weight classes uh, for the Olympic Games. And, and there's a, there's just a conflict of interest there, really. I mean, not, I don't know if kind of conflict of interest is a word, but, but you know, the athletes go into the Olympic year. They're, they're looking at one thing. They're looking to make the team, right? And... And that's first and foremost on their mind. As a, as a national staff and as, as coaches, we're looking at the other thing. You know, whoever makes the team makes a team. we got to get the weights qualified. And so I just think that, you know, last year we saw some things happen. We, we go to the Pan Am Championships, our first qualifier, and a month later was our trial. And I just thought it was our, our minds weren't there, you know, and, and I think it showed. And so I'd, I'd like to back it up and, and try to get our uh, process in place where our teams are made and they're set before we start having any continental championships or any qualifiers. So, so let's try to start that right away and see how we like it. Maybe it's not the right answer. Maybe it's not. But I think right now is the time to try some things. And so, so let's move it back to December. Let's see how we like it. Now we have our trial um, you know, next April, at the end of April, the same time as the men's nationals will be our trial. And then, and then we go to our continental championships. And I just think it's a, it's a better order of events. And so, and moving forward, you know, I really think that it's, as we look again towards the Olympic year, um, you know, whatever the process is at that time, whatever we come to, I'm hoping that we can get a, a process in place where we establish our team before we start having the, um, the qualification for the Olympic games, because I think it's a, just a completely different focus for the athlete. So, so that's really what we're trying to do. Um, is it the best thing? Is it the right thing? I don't know. yet. We'll, we'll, we'll have answers at the end of the year probably, and we'll make adjustments. Um, well, there's still some other things we're looking at, but I think it's a starting point to see where we're at. I, I, I think to, to go forward and not make changes and not look at other al- alternatives, I think is a mistake. And, and so I, I think what happened last year in Frisco, Texas at our Pan Am qualifier, um, it, it tells a story. And if we don't look at that and then make changes, I think we're, we're fooling ourselves. And then maybe it's not as important for a men's program, um, but I know a women's program, that team aspect of things, um, is is completely different than it is for 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 a man, and, and so you know, like, and, uh, and I'll just look right to our neighbors to the north of us. I mean, Canada went into to the the qualification in in Texas last year. They already had their team set. They left the Pan Am Championships that qualifier, and they qualified four weights leaving there, and and they had their whole team qualified. And so, and that's, that's by far our easiest qualif- qualification is, is the Pan Am Championship. So I just think we got to set ourselves right to have 
um, success in the future. And Coach Lindland, circling back to you here, you've kind of done things a little differently anyway. You put the trials in Daytona. You've put them uh, the third match or the second and third matches up in Ithaca at Cornell. You've kind of thought outside of the box here. Now, with echoing what Coach Steiner said, where, where are you thinking with the, the same type of schedule? I mean, are you barring you talk to him at all and trying to say, oh, hey, let's let's come together on this? Or was this like this is just a, a natural fit for us and women to be uh, on the same boat with the same type of schedule? Well, yeah, I, I mean, I communicate with my colleagues and, and, you know, I mean, Terry's got a lot more experience doing this than I do. So I, I should ask him questions and I should learn from him. Um, but yeah, I, I think why we've done our trials, um, you know, at, at the times we've done it is because we, you know, as Americans, we base our, our international system off of, off of what's best for folk style. And, uh, that's not what's best for, Greco-Roman for sure, and it doesn't seem like it's what's best for women either. But you know, we're gonna we're gonna definitely try to get on on a schedule that's at least more similar to the rest of the world. Like Terry was saying with the Canadian team, they um, they knew who was going to be on their team, so they sent those athletes to the qualifier. It was it was hard sending guys that weren't on the team to a, to a qualifier. You know, they were. They didn't know why they were qualifying the late, I guess, uh, or whatever the reason was. We we had a terrible performance as a U.S. team as a whole at the qualifier. Um, we got a lot of guys qualified. We ended up getting it done. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we left some, some guys home that, that were good enough to qualify at the Pan Ams had they gone or had they, you know, performed up to their, their potential. And had we had that team selected earlier, I would have been able to – prepare those athletes to be able to compete at the best of their abilities. So as we wrap up here on episode 38, again, the schedule is going to be, it's, it's, it's a bear. Like, uh, like coach Lindlin was saying, golden grand prix clubs cup, non-Olympic worlds, and then turn around two weeks later, or actually a week later in Vegas, you've got the, the Greco and women's U S nationals and the, the qualifier for the world team trials and the world team trials in April, Coach Steiner, not quite as crazy with the Clubs Cup on the women's side, but you know, you're know you heading over uh, to Budapest soon. What's the women's schedule like uh, as, as we prep? Is Coach Lindland and Greco's already over there. When do you guys ship out from the Springs? Uh, yeah, it's been crazy. I mean, we had you know we had the New York tournament, uh, the Bill Farrell tournament, uh, which was our trial for the, for the world. Then we went over to Baku last week. We, can't, we chose to come back, um, and now we're, we're heading back over again next week for the world. Uh, we also have next week, we have a few people going to the Russia, the C- Russia cup for the women, um, which is the same time as, as uh, non-Olympic weight world championships. And then we come back for, for the, the nationals the, the following week. So it's definitely a bit busy schedule. And we're just trying to get the most out of the year we can. <laughs> so, so, um, but it's, it's, it's good. I mean, it, it is what it is, you know, that, uh, if if it was up to, you know up to us, I don't know if I would have put the non Olympic weight worlds right right at this point in time. But you know it, it is what it is. So so uh, that's when it was thrown on us, and we had to m- and make things happen. So, so we're excited about it, and then we're you know a- after after the first of the year, then we're starting the whole process again. Matt Lillen, I'm going to give you the last word here on the program since uh, you, you don't have a problem speaking. <laughs> well, neither does Coach Steiner, but, uh, you know, Coach has been uh, Coach Steiner has been very, very uh, – he's, he's kind of controlled the interview because he always has a lot to say. But, Matt, you get to close it down here. What do you, what do you got for me, Jason? You got a question or, or, or you just want me to throw – you want me to throw some stuff out there? Well, we're, we're looking forward to competing here in, in both tournaments. You know, we got some young guys competing in the Clubs Cup, and that's, that's you know, kind of our philosophy right now, get get these young guys as much experience, as much training competition as they can internationally. Um, training competing against the, the other Americans isn't going to help us prepare to, to win World and Olympic medals in the future. So we're going to be spending a lot more time in Europe um, as far as that goes. And, you know, we're, we're looking forward to seeing how these athletes compete with Martinez, a little more experienced than, than Gonzalez, but, uh, both, both guys are incredible athletes and, uh, they're well prepared. So we'll, we'll go out there and, uh, I, I just want the guys to, like I heard coach say, perform well, perform up to their abilities and their potential and, and let the chips fall where they will. These, these guys are both capable if they, if they do that.
show is part of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.